Welcome back to another episode of Risto's Reef. Home of the Gladiator here behind me, doing eh, doing pretty good. We're on our what six plus weeks of lockdown, probably seven weeks of lockdown here in New York City. Can't do much, so I figured let's talk some reefing. Now, I there's a few questions I always get on a regular basis. Some are questions, some are complaints. Some of the questions I normally get is what you're running, what you're dosing, how long you keep your lights on, you know, what are you feeding, stuff like that. Some of the complaints I get is my torches is not doing too good, my softies, my, you know, my mushrooms are not opening up and everything of that nature. So, I figured I'm going to make this video. I started elaborating on it on Instagram one day, but had to cut it short. So, I figured I'm going to make this video. Now, let me, let me move for a second. Take a look at this tank. Now, we're at 5, 20 inches, 2 feet deep. So, 5 feet long, 2 feet wide. 20 inches deep and the reason why I said that because I'm not sure if any section of the Great Barrier Reef Indonesia Bali where wherever there's reef I'm not sure if there's any section of a five-foot reef with this diversity of, of corals in it so we are left with the challenge of keeping so many different species so many different type of organism in a compact in a compact um, glass box so it has its challenges now this tank is 20 inches deep and I'm gonna have a deep water coral it's 20 inches deep is there any coral that's really gonna live in 20 inches deep in the ocean and it's a deep water coral so you know what I'm saying it is a challenge so we, 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 face, we face the problem of trying to keep everything we want to keep that we like. They may not like our tank, but we like them. We're trying to keep them happy, have everything grow, have everything thrive, not everything survive. A lot of time we are just keeping corals alive, but they're not growing, they're not doing anything. And I don't know if that's, you know, what we really want. We want to see the coral thrive and grow and stuff like that. So we left with that challenge of how do we try to keep everything growing, happy, colored up, looking beautiful in five feet. Some of us got six foot, some of us got 10, 12 feet of aquarium, but none of us have a tank that's acres as we, you're going to encounter in the wild. So, my whole philosophy of this is I'm going to keep what's doing good. In other words, you have to gravitate to what's doing good in your tank. If you're having a problem with certain corals, you know, leave it alone for, for, for a minute or two. Maybe there's something going on in the tank that is not the optimal condition for that coral. Reintroduce that coral, you know few months in a year or two in if you know you have that patience but constantly buying the same coral and it's dying it's dying it's dying and you keep oh i want to keep this and you know i don't think it's really it it brings up a level of frustration on your behalf and a certain level of you know what i'm done you know let's see what it is you're getting pissed off and you're like you know what i gotta get out of the hobby so gravitate to whatever is doing good in your tank. Also, you gotta understand, you 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 you're not gonna be able to keep everything happy. You know, I just don't think you're gonna get every piece of coral that your eyes see that's pretty that you're gonna does great in your tank. So. You're not trying to, 
Now, like I would tell a friend of mine, you have certain beautiful cores, expensive core doing beautiful in your tank, and you're trying to fix the tank to make a $30 frag happy, but you have a $1,000 colony that you're willing to upset to make a $30 frag, you know, happy. So, you know, I think that's the wrong direction to go. Introduce your pieces, give them what they like, what they need, as long as it doesn't interfere with what your tank is. If you have a softy, people say dirty, maybe it's more of a, you know, a little bit higher nutrients that tank may like. Now, you're introducing certain SPS and certain organisms that like to clean, and they're not doing too good. Your tank is not made for that. So, whatever, whatever tank you decide to keep, whether it be, if you want to do now, this is a mixed reef, don't get me wrong. But there's a lot of things in here that I've tried that just didn't do good. There's no acans in this tank, maybe a few blastos. And people say acans and blastos are probably a, I've never been able to keep acans. And people say they're so easy there, haven't worked out for me. So I gravitate from them. Every once in a while I introduce, introduce them to the frag system. They stay alive. They don't thrive. So I've made up my mind. I'm going to keep them out of the gladiator. They, them and the gladiator have a problem. So that, that's, just basically, that's just basically what I'm saying. I'm gravitating to the stuff that I can keep. I know I can manage. I know that's working for me. I'm not trying to keep, uh, it's, put it this way, it's the same as a fish that's not reef safe. We may like that fish, but we know it's going to eat our corals, it's, and then we don't do it. Apply the same, apply the same system to, to, to the corals. If the corals doesn't do good, you know, just don't constantly go in out find that coral and putting it, you know, in the tank. Also, learn about that coral. The, the, the beauty of this hobby is so much people you can reach out that can tell you, try this, try that, and all of that stuff to help that coral grow. And I don't mean changing your system. I mean, some things may need to be target fed. So you may get a piece, it's not doing good for me. Someone may tell you, have you ever target fed, you know, target feed it? And you say, no, not really. They say, well, next time you try one, try a regular one. You know, buy a more of the entry level of that piece. In other words, buy a regular A can. In my, in my situation, buy a regular A can, target feed it and see if that works. But just do not go out and buy you know, the crazy, ridiculous Aiken, if you can't keep Aiken also, and then just watch it die in your tank. So, you know, so this video was basically about, you know, let your tank gravitate. Start with an idea that you're going to have. Now, the majority of us want this idea. That we want everything that we see and everything that we like. But no, it comes with a lot of work and challenges. Like I always say, this hobby is not as hard as it is, but it's like everything else. It can be as hard as you make it, or it can be as easy as you make it. You know, so that's just basically what I'm saying. Gravitate to what's doing good in your tank, master that, then move on to something. But if it's not working with you, leave it alone. Keep whatever is working for you. Apply it in your relationship. Apply it to a woman. If a girl don't like you, move away from her. You understand what I'm saying? So, anyway, once again, it's your boy, Ristos, the gladiator, here in New York. I locked down, so I figured I made this video because, you know, I get these calls that this is not doing too good and that's not doing too good. Sometimes I sell, you know, leave it alone. Try a different, try a different kind of corals. So, remember, like, subscribe, 
hit that notification bell with my boy Dane. He loads up these video for me and stuff. And remember, you can always check out the Instagram page. A lot of this, a lot of these things are for sale. If you need something, hit me up. I'll let you know if I have a frag of it. Some of it is doing good. Some of it is surviving. So, you know, once again, like, share, subscribe. It's the Gladiator. It's your boy Risto. New York lockdown. God bless everybody out there. Please, 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 please. Very important. Stay safe. Do what they're asking you to do to protect yourself and your family. And with that being said, I'm out. Boom.